We could talk like this all day, Rod. <laughs> uh, it's all good. That's probably the most entertaining part of some of the workshops. <laughs> is that three or four minutes before we get rolling. <laughs> You're all good to go at the bottom of the hour whenever you want to start. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Rod. Hi, Alicia. Nice to see you. It is so sunshiny and nice out today. Hopefully, we can get outside and enjoy it after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marcus, nice to see you. Hi, folks. How are you? I'm good. How How's are the stress going? levels? <laughs> better, better, like at you know, in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is mush. Put it that way. Yep. <laughs> I think that that's acceptable at this point. Yeah. Where I feel like we're all feeling it. It's all good. I know. Just got to stay positive. That's that's, that's the it. key. You guys are good role models that way. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, um, I see there's a star on the screen. Can everybody else see that? <clears throat> yes. mm -hmm. So I, I remember yesterday someone was on an iPad and wasn't sure how to annotate that map. Not that we're annotating today, but I was checking that out. In the bottom left-hand corner, if you hover over there, there's a pen that option that comes up, and then you can have some tools that you can use, and that's how you annotate on an iPad. Thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. Just FYI, in case you're ever in another Zoom session. <laughs> hey, we have a question already. This might be a good time just to kind of start. I know we have a minute or so left, but um, someone is saying, I have a parent asking how their child can directly write on a Google Doc. I have been trying to figure it out, but I can't find a way. Is there one? Do I you... Want... Go ahead, Alicia. I was just going to say, do you want to pop, maybe turn on your um, mic, maybe give us a little bit more information and we can try to troubleshoot with you? Or you can type if you don't want to turn on your mic. <laughs> no, I just, I don't know how to have them write on it. They, they're not comfortable typing. It might be a math question actually they're asking mm -hmm. about and they want to draw <laughs> on the page. Is there um, a tool that we can put on the, um, like on the toolbar that allows them to use their finger or whatever to write with or mouse. So do we want to we kind of have an answer to some extent to that, um, that we're going to talk about later on. So do we want to jump in and just put that answer kind of after we get started? Cause we are going to address that. No, that's perfect. Then thank you. Okay. All right, so we're right at 12.30. So it's telling me it's time to get started. So here we are, part C. We're currently using Google Classroom. You guys have I'm just wondered if I tuned into the wrong channel here. It's the Food Network. <laughs> okay, so we'll start by, uh, with our traditional territorial acknowledgement. I'm just going to get rid of our annotations here. Sorry, there we go. Yes, no? Okay, we might have yeah. to have annotations. Oh, Sorry. I think you're still in annotations. I know, there we go. <laughs> okay. We acknowledge that the land on which we are gathered is part of the traditional territory of the Chippewa, Odawa, Potawatomi, and Delaware nations. These indigenous nations, known as the Anishinaabek and the Napao, agreed through their ancestral languages to the mutual sharing of the land with obligations and responsibilities to the environment. Today, these responsibilities and obligations extend to all peoples. Okay, so uh, we're spread all over uh, the area here. So this uh, land acknowledgement is specifically for the area that the Lympton Kent District School Board covers. And in, actually in our Google Classroom, there's a good map that you can go to to find out who, uh, whose traditional territory you're on. So you can check that out in the classroom. Uh, so, let's see, next slide. Okay, so um, 
the focus of our three sessions. So today's our last day and we have a lot of questions to go over. And um, we spent a lot of time working, reading through those and um, creating the content for that. And so then we're gonna talk about differentiating within the classroom and commenting on and providing feedback on student work in the coursework. Uh, so again, my name is Gretchen Sands Gamble, and I am the special projects teacher for elementary Indigenous education for K to eight. And here are the rest of our hosts. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Hi, uh, I'm Alicia. I'm one of the instructional coaches for the board. And I'm Sharon. I teach grade three, four at Winston Churchill. And I'm Kate, and I'm also an instructional coach for the board. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly, I'm not going to spend too much time because I know we have addressed these six remote learning guidelines um, in every other session. So again, uh, number one, asynchronous learning. Number two, making sure that you're pacing the work for your students um, as they take longer at home. Number three, prioritizing and just covering what you feel is going to be beneficial. Uh, number four, being available, finding a time to connect with students if they do need support from you. Number five, making sure that we are intentional in what we are sending out to them, making sure that we know the purpose of that. And number six, working with tools that are familiar. And if we're going to introduce new tools to students, make sure we're doing so slowly enough so that students have a chance to uh, feel comfortable with them and ease into them. Okay. So we, again, um, just going over, we have had sessions on Seesaw all week. They uh, are finishing up today as well. If you think that Seesaw is something that you would like to look into, the posts are all going to be up. Okay, as well as the Google sessions that we have been presenting this week, they are also going to be there. Um, I also put up on this slide the blog post. So the uh, Lambton Kent Elementary Program blog post, what does have a link right there on the top um, that will take you directly to the elementary, re sorry, remote learning resource page, which is new. Um, so if you go and click on the blog, that will take you to this new uh, website and there is where all the archived videos and sessions will be housed. Okay. Okay, so we thought we would just recap like yes, um, yesterday from the day before what we did. Um, so yesterday Sharon walked us through the classworks tab of Google Classroom and we saw that on um, the desktop version and this is the iPad version on how to create assignments for your students. And then um, we talked about uh, how you can change the settings so you can uh, put a due date or a time um, up there and these are are the different uh, views that you have, depending on what you're working from home with. And then um, we also, I mean, we talked about a lot of things, but these were kind of the overviews. Um, this was where you add an assignment and um, what kind of links you could put in there. And then we also talked about creating a document and then making a copy for each student and so they know the expectations there and they don't have to create something they're not sure they're supposed to create a slide or a doc or whatever so that was all within the classwork stream yesterday that we covered okay so there were a lot of questions in the classroom itself and in the chat and on the padlet so we went through um, those and um, so Sharon went through and looked at ways to answer those questions and there were a lot and there were a lot of really good good questions so we'll get started with those right now okay so I am just going to um, switch over here it takes a moment so I'm going to switch over to my iPad um, just so we can share those from the iPad view because we know it is a little bit different 
And, and there course, were a lot of questions about that too, about the iPad and how it looks compared to the desktop as well. Yeah, for sure. So there we go. Um, so while that's getting started, there we go, perfect. Hopefully you can see my iPad here in just a moment. Yes, no, okay, uh, <laughs> perfect. Looks good. Uh, so the first question, and somebody actually already talked about it a little bit before we officially got started, was how do I take a page, so a PDF, um, or if you're like taking a picture of, of a piece of paper that you have that you want kids to answer on, how do you take that and turn it into something that students can edit and then send it back to you in an assignment? Um, so we got that question yesterday from lots of people. Um, I would hate to be the bearer of bad news, um, but we aren't gonna answer your question today. Not because we don't want to, but because it actually relies on some of the accessibility tools, um, which is not my area of expertise and is gonna take longer than we have today to kind of go through. Um, so what you're looking for though is the read and write PDF viewer and it's an extension that you can add on to read and write for Google um, they did cover it in the advanced Google session on day two they talked about it a little video um, so you could go back and watch the rewatch of that and then our AT team is also working on putting together some resources for people that will hopefully be available soon um, and then that will help you walk through that as well so there is an answer um, we just don't have that for you today, if that makes sense. So the next question that we had quite a few times was about decluttering that stream. Um, when we go into our stream view in Google Classroom, you've noticed it is, there's just, there's a lot, right? Um, it goes on and on forever. People wanted to know if there was any we could do about that. So I've got two different solutions for you. Um, the first solution is actually we can get rid of the coursework within the stream. Um, so you can see right now where it says new material, remote learning, Google resources. I can make all of that stuff from classwork. I can make that all go away in my stream. And we want to do that through the settings for the classroom. So I'm going to go to the gear in the upper right hand corner on iPad and I'm gonna to go to the very bottom, and you will see classwork on the screen. It's the very last thing you'll see there. So if I tap on the arrow, I'm gonna switch that over. I've got three choices. Right now I have show attachments and details. It's showing me everything. So it's taking up tons of space in the stream. I can change that to show condensed notifications. That'll take up less space, but they'll still be there. If I go to hide notifications, everything that's in the stream will be there, um, but everything that is part of coursework will not. I believe it's going to close just like it did for me because it refreshes the view. So every time I've done that, um, it closes it out on the iPad and then I have to go back in. But now that I'm back in, you can see none of that classwork is in the stream. It's just all of the posts that students have made. Okay, so that's one thing you can do to kind of streamline things a little bit is under that settings, uh, that gear. Sharon, I do think that this, this second, oh yeah. Sorry, I just, I think um, from a student point of view, I feel like that's something that will really help our students if we can minimize all of the stuff that's in the stream. Um, mm -hmm. And then that way they're, they can get used to the stream being used just as, you know, more of a conversation that that classroom community piece, whereas the assignment tab, they know that's where their work is going to be. So that might be really helpful. Yeah. I think so too. And then hopefully my next tip too will, will add to that helpfulness. Um, so this one's more about classwork. So a lot of you said yesterday, I've been using Google Classroom since September. I have this huge long list of things in classwork and I don't want students to have to scroll through to find something new. Um, so there isn't really a way to make those old things go away. Um, so if it were me in my classroom, this is what I would do now um, for remote learning. I would do the plus sign and create a new topic and maybe call it week of April 6th. Uh, because I've got this topic, maybe I still want my expectations at the top, but I could put all of the current work for the week into that topic. So I'll grab a couple of things from math. 
I'll drag those up into that topic. And so the students can go in, they can see, okay, this is everything current for the week. And that way they know they don't have to go and scroll all the way through to language or whatever it is where they may have assignments from like two months ago that are still sitting there. So that's one way you can kind of pull things to the top um, because the order that you put those topics in doesn't change no matter what. So then for this week, maybe you put all your assignments in the week of April 6th, next week add a new topic. Um, and that might help to organize things a little bit better for students uh, and too when you're going back and buying things. Are there any questions there about that organization before I move on? Actually, yes. Um, I might pause you there for a second. Yeah. Um, Alicia had a good question. Uh, let me just scroll back for it. She said, um, if you remove it from the stream, this is going back to your previous stream, will students still get notified that an assignment is posted on your classwork? So if they're on an iPad in their notifications on their device, if they have notifications turned on, they will still get those notifications showing that there's a new assignment. Um, so they're not going to receive them in the stream, but they'll receive them in that way. If they turn off those notifications, there's not a lot we can do um, to help that, right? So it would be setting the expectations for your class around, are they checking every single day to see if there's something new? You know, how often do they check? And I think that's something that you're going to have to lay out for students and let them know how often they should be checking in since you're not standing in front of them to remind them every day. Okay, thank you. I think that answers that. And I also wonder um, if they add it to a calendar, then it will show up on that little side calendar, what's due on what day. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. So if I go to the three lines um, up the top left corner, and this is on iPad or on a computer, um, I have calendar here and I can see my assignments are inside my calendar. Okay, so that's one of the questions that we asked. So that's still all available no matter what. Um, but it does, in iPad, it takes me right out to calendar. Uh, in the desktop version, I feel like it's up on the right side. Um, you can see the calendar and then same thing. You can go in and look at it there. Okay, great. And then one more question. Mm -hmm. When you're in the class, um, Yep, when you're in this screen here, yeah. can you make subtopics? You cannot. Okay. So you got expectations at the top. We can't nest another topic inside of that, unfortunately. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. So the next uh, question that people had, and this was actually what our plan was for today, was to talk about some small group things. So in Google Classroom, everything doesn't have to go out to every student in the class. I can take assignments and I can assign them just to specific students. So if I scroll down here to my math section, you can see I have Carpenter Task with the purple circle beside it. Um, but then I have above that, I've got grade out Carpenter Task Group 2. So what's happened there is I've started a post, um, but I didn't want to post it quite yet. So I just saved that as a draft. So I'm going to go in and open that now. So this Carpenter Task that we're doing, I have two different versions of it. So I have some students who need a more complex task, and then I have some students who maybe they need the numbers to be a little bit easier to work with to start. So I've got my Carpenter Task Group 2. Um, I've already got my Carpenter Group 2 um, assignment, my attachment there. And I'm going to go to the top where it says, you can see learning at home, you can see that little bar with the arrow, and then beside it, it says all students. If I tap on all students, it's going to bring me to my entire class list and you can see everybody's checked off. So that means right now, if I were to post this, every student is going to get the exact same assignment. But this version is maybe just for a small group of students. I don't want everybody to have it. So I'm going to tap the checkbox at the top that's because I only have a small group for this one. Okay, so I've cleared all my checkboxes and now I can go through and decide who I want that to have that one. So maybe I want Alicia and Alicia and Andrea and Carolyn and Christine. So there's my little small group that I want to have this version of the assignment. 
and I'm going to hit done. Okay. And you can see now at the top, instead of saying all students, now it says five students. So it reminds me that I've just assigned this one to a small group and not to the entire class. Okay. And so now I can go ahead and hit my send button. There we go. Okay, so you can see under math, both of the assignments appear for me. I can still see both of them, of course, as, of course, as the teacher. Um, but if you went in and you weren't tagged in the Carpenter Task Group 2, you are not going to see that assignment in your stream. It's only going to go out to the students I've tagged in the assignment. Is there any questions there before I move on? All right, so our next, um, the next thing I want to take a look at is that teacher view. We had questions yesterday about the submitted work piece. So what does that workflow look like um, after the students submit something? What does that look like from the teacher side of things? So I'm going to go down into what do you notice, which is under language here. And this is an assignment that I gave yesterday and I have a few students who have already gone ahead and turned in that assignment. Um, so my job now is going to be to go in and maybe give them some feedback. I can mark it all in this space. Um, this is one of the places where Google Classroom looks very different on iPad versus on the computer. So right now I'm in the iPad view. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then at the end, um, if we still have a little bit of time, I will go into the desktop view to show you the differences there because there's some extreme differences. Um, most of the same functionality, but just some differences in how it appears. So here's my assignment. You can see it took me right to the student work tab. If I forgot what I asked them to do, I can tap back to instructions and see what the assignment was, see if there's any comments from students under there. Okay, but here's my student work. And on the left hand side, you'll see there's this long list of students. Um, I can see that only three have turned it in so far. Um, I've still got 95 that are out there and I've already graded one and sent it back. And then I have my three that are turned in that are ready for marking. So if I start with Angela's, you can see on the right hand side, um, there's her water poster. So I could just tap inside of it so I can take a look at it. Okay. This opens it in a view that I'm able to um, look at. I can also use the pen tool on odd using the pen tool in the right hand side. If I tap on that, it's going to allow me to go into the document and I can make some edits right on this document. Um, so I can take my pen tool um, and maybe I want to let her know that, oh yeah, that's great. You know, I took a look at this. I can highlight some things if maybe I want her to think about something later on. So I can make some annotations right on top um, of my document here, okay? When I say, it's going to go back out to her as a PDF so she can see what I've done. Um, but her uh, copy that she's made where she's um, typing on, she's still going to be able to go in and add her edits there, but she'll be able to see that PDF to see what I did to it. Okay, So I've taken a look at her poster or at her uh, writing about that poster. You can see both of the attachments are there now, the one that I've added to and the one that she submitted. So I can say, um, great job, next time, okay. I'm not gonna say some feedback for her, but you can see where I could add that comment in. And I am going to give her a grade, okay. So she got a level three, well done. Um, and you can see actually underneath her name, you can see it says turned in late. Um, I was kind of sneaky here and I rolled back the due date on it so that he's late but I wanted to show you that even if a student hands in something late you still have access to it they're still able to hand it in it's not that that assignment disappears they're still able to give that to you and I as teacher can make that yep they handed it in but maybe it did come in a bit late okay so that is there for you um, once I have done everything I need to do, so I have added a mark in this case, you may do that, you may not. I've also added my feedback. 
in the upper right hand corner, I can now hit return and it gives me a notification that students going to receive an email and they can check on their grade or comments that I've left. And there we go, I'll hit return. I'm hoping Angela's in our session today, um, so she isn't wondering why I'm writing random things on what she submitted. So, um, so there we go. So I've submitted Angela's, um, and now she's disappeared off the top. So I know as teacher, it kind of gives me a bit of a marking to-do list, and I can move on now to Beth's and do the same process with hers. Sharon, are you uh, working from an iPad, right? I am. I'm on iPad right now. Okay. Yeah, afterwards, I think we'll probably have time afterwards. I'll go in and I'll show what it looks like on desktop because it is a little bit different and there's some benefits for sure um, to doing marking on the desktop, especially if you're recording grades. There's some benefits okay. to being on the desktop. There's benefits to being on iPad just as far as being able to annotate easily in that PDF, right? That markup and highlighting is really easy on an iPad, which is nice. Um, but the grading part, uh, a desktop or a laptop or whatever does have some benefits over the iPad for sure. Okay, yeah, thanks. Erin, someone is asking um, if you happen to have a minute, if you just mind going back over how you turned um, that Google Doc into uh, the PDF style, just so that you can um, put the marking on it. Like do yeah, for sure. On it. Yeah, so if I go back, if I go into Beth's water poster here, when I open it up, you can see there's that square with the arrow in the top corner. Remember yesterday we talked about that's how students have to bring that out to put it into Google Docs or slides. But on mine right now, beside that square with the arrow is the pencil. And that's where we do our annotations. So when I top, tap on that little pencil, it's going to take me out in a place where I can write on top of the document. Does that answer your question? Yep, I think that's good. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to X out of here and go back. So I'm back into my classwork um, stream. Just a couple of quick things I want to point out while we're in the classroom um, stream. These two assignments I've put up at the top under week of April 8th. You can see they're both which one doesn't belong. And I've got them marked in two different ways. So the top one is which one doesn't belong and it's a discussion. And you can see by that purple icon with the question mark that this one is uh, when I created the assignment in Google Classroom, I made it as a question. The one below, I have created that one as an individual um, assignment that would go out. And so I just want people to really be aware of the differences because if you're doing something like a which one doesn't belong, you have two different purposes for it. Um, so in our first one, we have our which one doesn't belong. And you can see Alicia has her own copy of it here and she would be sharing her reasons underneath. Okay, so this is an individual assignment. Only Alicia is going to see it. Uh, nobody else is going to be able to see her work, right? So that's kind of the traditional Google Classroom. Uh, send it out, student does it, and submits it. The one above that that says which one doesn't belong with a discussion. Um, when I go into this one, you can see my picture is there with my which one doesn't belong. I've given the students some instructions there. So if you agree with someone, how they could agree. And then in my student work, you can see that the students um, can all reply there and then they're able to show each other's comments. And so this is, this can be more of a discussion as opposed to just student communicating with teacher. This can be also students seeing each other's work and student communicating with student. So just keep in mind, there's more than one way to put out a task, depending on what the purpose is, whether you want students to talk to each other about it or keep just one talking to you. And we've left some of these different assignments in here for you. Um, you know, feel free to go in and take a look just as examples of things that you, you could do in the classroom um, in different ways that you can use the assignment types. All right, are there any questions here before I jump out of iPad and go back into our um, computer view? I don't know if anything directly related to this, but I know that um, Colette has asked 
how she can add parents so they can view only. She said when she's added some, they appear as students and are getting notifications of assignments. Mm. Okay, so um, we want, no, that's not what I want to do. Um, I want to go in, and we did this the other day where we were adding the guardian, and I did it on the desktop, and now I'm struggling with where I found it on the laptop. Uh, uh, we can oh, also here we go. I'm it. in stream. Yeah, it's remember it's in stream. Um, we've got that information, and no, I'm lying. I'm not going to be able to figure that out in this moment. We did talk about it in another session, but you know what? We can go back in um, and uh, send that information. It was also in our first day. We went through how to add the guardian. Um, um, it's like a short form. They get it once a week. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Anything else before I jump back out to uh, my computer view? I don't think that I see any questions so far. Okay. Seems pretty clear. Thanks, Sharon. Okay. All right, so I'll just change out here um, just so we can show a couple of things that are going to be very different in our laptop view. Um, about the assignments, those are because there were some comments about the assignments. You can use those for your classroom too. Um, are they able to just copy copy those assignments and use them in their own Sharon or would they be so recreated? They won't be able to um, they won't be able to sorry I'm having a hard time getting out of my mind. They won't be able to um, copy the assignment from Google Classroom directly, but what they can do is they can go into um, into Docs into like when they open up their assignment, they can go into Drive, and they can make a copy of it for themselves, which they can then share with their students. Okay, so they can't share the post in um, Google Classroom exactly, mm -hmm. but they can take that into Google Docs or Google Slides and make a copy for themselves to use. Okay, great, thank okay, you. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. All right. Okay, so now I'm back into Google Classroom with my computer. And I just want to highlight across the top, um, on the iPad, we had stream, we had classroom, we had people. Um, when we're in on computer, we've got the grades tab up here as well. So there's actually a whole fourth tab, which we haven't really dealt with at all. Um, I'm going to quickly show you what it looks like. We're not going to go into any depth, but you can see that it kind of sets up this uh, spreadsheet almost for you on the computer. Um, I know there was a couple questions earlier about people who wanted to use um, Google Classroom more to kind of track these assignments and things. So that's an option if you're on the laptop or computer as opposed to being on the iPad. It's a lot harder to do on the iPad. Um, we are looking at maybe, you know, next week or in future, maybe there'll be, um, we could run sessions that are more about the assessment and evaluation piece in Google Classroom and how to use it for a tool for those kinds of things. Um, we just don't have time to delve into all of those things today. And so very last, I'm going to go back into, what do you notice here? Okay, so I'm in teacher view again with student work. Okay, so this is just like I was on the iPad. You can see the view is a little bit different. I can still open up your Shannon's assignment. Okay, but you can see once I open up, I've got all of these different ways to look at things here in the laptop view. So I can grade it right here. I can add my private comment um, right here and then up at the top is where I would return that to the student okay um, I can return this submission I can also if I'm on a computer I can just use the arrows and now I can go on to the next person's submission and so 
that having all the people along the left hand side like I had on iPad, um, I can just toggle through all of my different assignments here. And then at the very end, instead of returning them one by one, I can hit return multiple submissions. So if you're going through and um, getting feedback on a computer as opposed to an iPad, um, it is a little bit more streamlined in how you would go about doing that. Okay, so that's the end of what we kind of planned for today. We wanted to make sure we had a couple minutes at the end in case there were any questions, since this is our last session and we won't have a chance to address them tomorrow. So anything come up in the chat? So Beth has asked, um, she's tried to use the tools to draw and write on the fraction sheet and she was able to do that, but there isn't a save or submit uh, on the screen on the iPad. I will just weigh in on that too, because I'm actually doing that on my iPad, because um, I had another, Jen was asking that too. I, the save function is blacked out for me, so I'm not sure what that is. I'm trying to play around with it a little bit. It's hard for you, Sharon, because you're not in there as a student. Um, but yeah, that annotate with the pen tool, I've still got to figure that out. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not sure from that student view, like I know that, um, I know in the one uh, course I'm in, I went in to see if that pen tool was there as a way to annotate because I know that used to be an option. Um, and I found the same thing. I didn't even have that tool at all, but it may depend on the type of document it was. So I think probably using that, uh, the read and write write PDF viewer that our AT team can help out with might be a better option for annotating on top of a document. Um, when I was annotating today, I was in teacher view and then I did have that pen tool in order to be able to highlight or make comments on student work that way. I also just want to um kind of make note that we did create some math uh, assignments and Sharon has posted them up into the learning at home classroom just so I know some of you yesterday were asking for some ideas for math tasks so um, there are a couple up there if you would like to check them out and again take the time to kind of go in and play with some of these assignments so you can help troubleshoot uh, with your kids when they may need some help. The other thing I've posted in here too, under Google Classroom resources, you can see the very top material is the remote learning um, resources. So this is the site that Alicia mentioned earlier that we've created. So if you need to go back and watch any of the videos again, or you're interested in watching the ones um, that were on Seesaw or one of the other topics, um, I've put the link in Google Classroom so you can access it right from there as well. Someone uh, earlier, I'm just trying to find it, was, oh, um, said they tried to copy the link on Sharon's demo class for the parent guide, but my students are telling me it is not working. Where can we access helpful Google cheat sheets, parent guides to include on our classroom? I wondered if maybe that was because the link was sent via Google and if a parent's trying to open it and they don't have an LKDSB account, then the sharing rights are not right. Yeah, it probably is. So the teacher could make their own copy of and maybe change those sharing rights. Oh, and I think that they figured it out. Perfect. <laughs> Also, there was a question about if you are, um, if you are a part, hang on, it was about uh, having multiple teachers. So if you're a prep coverage teacher and you're part of other ones, does everybody see everybody's assignments? And I think that's a yes. Yeah, if you have, so if you have multiple teachers in the classroom, everybody can see everything. Um, all the teacher views will be the same inside that classroom. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so if there are no more questions, I'll jump back here for our slide and kind of hand it back over to the rest of the team. Perfect. And I know Silka just asked a question um, on how to get to Sharon's Google Classroom again. So if you type in classroom.google.com and click on join classroom, um, the code is, I'll put it in the chat again, but you just need to click on join a class and the code is 46BXXWZ. And if you uh, type that in, then you should have access to it to go in as a student. Okay, hope that helps. Okay, and again, um, if you have any questions, we will leave this Padlet open if you want to put them up there and we will check on uh, this Padlet and make sure that we do our best to post in the classroom that Sharon has opened. Um, and again, if we leave that open and you have questions, you can put them in there as well. Okay. And a big thank you, Alicia, to Sharon for sharing, for everyone for being here, Gretchen, Kate, Alicia. Uh, I think the strength of our district always is our relationships and how we pull together to help each other. And that certainly has uh, been shown here in the last three days. So thank you, uh, everybody, for your ongoing support of our kids at this time. I don't want to hijack the whole uh, conversation here, Alicia. So I'm going <laughs> to quietly back away from the microphone, Alicia. That's okay, Ben, we appreciate it. We appreciate you being here as well. Um, again, there are our email addresses, please reach out. Um, that is what we are here for. We would love to support you. Uh, so do not hesitate, we don't mind at all. Okay. Okay. Um... Sorry, we're on this live. So here is a website that we would love to have your feedback about these sessions and um, maybe provide some further uh, support for you. So if you would like to go to this um, tiny URL and fill out a quick form, that would be great. And sorry, I think it was my dog in the background. What kind of dog is it, Kate? It's part of the charm of these online I know, meetings. it's a retriever. It's because my dog, my kids are playing outside because I kicked them out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's it, then why don't we all flip on our cameras and wave hello to each other. Let's stop sharing our screen. And then I think that's like uh, the new way we say goodbye. It's nice to see everybody. That's why we do this. You know, hey, Leslie. Hey, Megan. You see, folks? It's really great to see everybody today. I hope everybody's doing well. Hey, Jana. Mike. Hey, Ben. This is somebody said it was like the romper room when we. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly, how's it going? Oh, I'll look at Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Errol. Yeah. Beth. Laura. Tim. It's great to see everybody. Great idea there. And look at Errol puts his dog on. Nicely Aww. played, Errol. 